begin with a word of prayer, shall we? God, thank you for your word. You have a word of hope for us today, a word of challenge, a word of grace. Let it touch each of our hearts as we gather in this place today. The words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Who was the best boss you ever had? Can you think of somebody? Who was the best boss who, they, maybe they, did they pay you well? Did they uh, praise you for a job well done? Think, think about that person. What was great about them? Did they support your ideas and efforts? Did they lead you to grow and succeed? I worked for a radio station uh, just out of college in Tallahassee, Florida, the bustling metropolis of Tallahassee. And we had a general manager of this five radio station group. We affectionately called him Hollywood Dave. Now, Hollywood Dave was a radio legend. This guy was a big deal, especially in country music, where he helped uh, really people take country music seriously in places like New York and LA. Uh, so he was a hot shot when he came to town. And uh, we knew him as the guy with the fake tan and the mirrored sunglasses and the manicured nails and the sweet sports car out in the parking lot. So we called him Hollywood Dave. And he'd saunter down the hallway, making sure everybody knew he was there. And he'd, he'd check in on us, say, how you doing? Everybody good? All right. But also just to check in on us and make sure we had what was needed to do the job. He was, he was a good boss. He was a nice enough guy. He helped us to feel like we were on the right track and, and they helped us to feel like a team. And I really liked him until the day he fired me. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, there was nothing scandalous. I didn't do anything wrong. This is kind of comes with the territory in the radio business when a station is making changes. Somebody's got to go. So uh, it, w- it wasn't so bad, though, because he, just to show there were no hard feelings, he gave us his credit card and let us go out to lunch. And uh, we did some damage that day. <laughs> we did. And, uh, you know, he, he was a good guy. And, and what was funny is just about two months later, I started working at a new radio station just down the road in Jacksonville, Florida. And the same day I started... Hollywood Dave started at that same station, too. So he got to be my boss again. (laughs) Yeah. And we got to do a lot of really good stuff together. We launched a brand new radio station. We got to raise a bunch of money for St. Jude. And we got to uh, grow together as a team. But he was a good boss because we really felt like he was in it with us. And uh, for all that he was, uh, the radio legend and the hotshot general manager, he was right there with us in the trenches. And uh, he took care of us. He helped us serve our community and set the example for us. So today in the church across the world, it's Christ the King Sunday. And this is a a fairly new festival date in the church calendar. It actually began in 1925. And then uh, about uh, 50 years later was moved to the end of November, which we mark the last day in the church year. So happy new year, everybody. It doesn't match up with our regular calendar, I know, but we will, we'll let that slide. And this, this festival day was, was began because uh, things were happening in the world. Think about that in the, in the mid-1920s. This was a caution against uh, nationalism across the world to remind the faithful Christians that we live in a different kind of world, a world, a kingdom instituted by Jesus, who is our king. But as Americans, I mean, I don't think we, we don't think too much about kings these days. Um, We live in a different kind of system of government where we get to choose those we'd like to lead us and and represent our voices. And we love our nation, of course, but, but maybe today we get to be reminded again of the one who rules the whole world with truth and grace, who leads us to serve one another and to follow Jesus in the way of healing and peace. Jesus is speaking to his friends just days before the Passover in this reading, just before he's going to go to the cross and die. And he's speaking from a place called the Mount of Olives. You've probably heard of it. This is the same place we hear from the prophet Zechariah, who proclaims that the Lord will be known from every nation. Every nation will recognize the kingship of the Lord. And he's giving them directions on how to live after he's gone, after he's not with them in person anymore. He speaks to them in parables, right? Stories that tell a lesson. So the beginning of this chapter, he talks about 10 bridesmaids, reminding them to be ready. He teaches them about talents, a lesson in investing faithfully and about the judgment of the nations. 
with instructions on how to live the faith. And Jesus, I want to say, because we don't, we don't really have a king, right? But, but we have bosses and we kind of get what that's about. Jesus is like the best boss we've ever had. He's, he's in it with us, right? Showing us the way. And he gives himself for us. But it's not just us, right? It's not just Las Vegas. It's not just America. It's, it's the whole world. The promise we hear today is there's no power greater in the world than God's power. God rules the whole world. So you can write that down in your bulletin and fill in the blanks as we go and bring this scripture with you. Because we know he's got the whole world. You got it. You got it. You got it. You won't have to sing the whole song. But there are, there are powers in the world that try to rule us, that try to, to lord power over us. They're the power of fear. They want us to be afraid. They want us to feel like we don't have enough, that power of scarcity or the power of division that tears us apart one from another, power of death in the world. But the power of God is stronger than all of that. The author of Ephesians tells it like this, God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Read this part with me far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named. Jesus is not just the king of this nation or that one, but is the name above all names, the ruler of heaven and earth, and no power can do what God can do. So we don't have to be afraid when nations, powers of the world battle each other, and maybe we ought to think about that and be a little careful when we are tempted to choose sides in conflicts, knowing that God is calling us to see the whole world a little differently as one, one beautiful world that is loved, not just to prop up empires of the earth, but to seek truth and justice, to work for peace in the whole world in the name of Jesus. It was so awesome this week to see the work that we get to do for the world together as Operation Christmas Child. And thanks to your generosity and great leaders like Jill Gertz and Donna Hall over the Lakes Campus and the amazing amount of shoeboxes that were packed up and sent all over the world, filled with gifts and toys, but also the promise of God's love in Christ Jesus. At the Lakes, they collected over 4,600 shoeboxes. Yeah. And, and they, they bled their own blood putting these boxes together. It was, it was dangerous at times. 9,400 boxes collected here at the Windmill Campus. Over 14,000 boxes Good Samaritan collected to send out across the world to bless these families. Isn't that amazing? It's good stuff, yeah. For real. And again, not just toys, not just gifts, but messages of hope and peace in Christ Jesus for children and their families all across the world. So we get to give these gifts. We get to care for these special families and model loving service to our own families. We're following the way Jesus has shown us. And Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he kind of uses this mixed metaphor. Is it a king? Is it a shepherd? A shepherd king. Hmm, I've heard that somewhere before. Hmm, Interesting. We'll We'll hold on to that for a minute. Jesus uses this image of a shepherd, right, caring for his sheep. And I think it's funny, too, that uh, sheep and goats. Today, we, we, we all think we want to be the goat, right? The greatest of all time, right, the goat. But Jesus says it's not about being the greatest. It's about following the shepherd. So we, maybe we ought to be sheep instead of goats. I like that. Jesus uses this image of a shepherd caring for the sheep like, like a good boss, who protects their employees, who leads them in the right way, the place where they should go, who makes good decisions for the benefit of the people. Christ, our king, does what is needed. But even more important than that, you know, most kings, they don't know the people. They don't get down and dirty with the subjects of the kingdom. Jesus is the kind of king that knows us and loves us deeply. We can trust that we belong to the Lord who cares for us. That's a different kind of king, one that really knows us and loves us. And we get to read about that in scripture. In Psalm 95, we're reminded whose we are. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, 
and the sheep of his hand. We are the sheep. We bow down before this, this great king, the one who loves us and cares for us. So we don't belong to this nation or that nation. Ultimately, we belong to God who rules the whole world. We don't have to be afraid. Even when we face threats or when we struggle or when we're in pain, we're citizens of this new kind of kingdom that Jesus brings into being through the cross. And we can know that we are his and that he gives us these gifts of mercy and forgiveness and healing and new life. Now, to be citizens comes with responsibilities. To be a responsible citizen in America, we know we, we are called to be informed, to participate in the electoral process, not just on the national level, but in our own community too. There's important work going on right here so that we can be good leaders and, and be a, a productive part of this kind of kingdom. We use our voices. We use the gifts that have been given to us so that we can serve and care for our neighbors. Jesus calls these sheep and he says, those who are blessed by my father, there they are, those who are blessed by my father, who are they? Interesting. If we look back at the beginning of Matthew's gospel, chapter five, we hear Jesus' first public message. We call them the Beatitudes, the way to be in the world, the promised blessings of God to those who trust and live in the way Jesus modeled. Jesus says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and the persecuted. Those are ones who are blessed. Well, maybe that's us at times, because we do suffer we may even face violence or ridicule or worse. And Jesus returns to this theme as he's teaching his friends to remind them that those who suffer, especially at the end times, those who serve in the kingdom are ones who are living faithfully in this new kingdom Jesus brings. They are the ones blessed by the Father. They are the ones who inherit the kingdom. Have you seen this show, Undercover Boss? It's funny stuff. When the, the boss gets in disguise and shows up amidst the workers and the CEO company of the company shows up as an entry level employee, seeing how the people get the job done for the customers and the community, how they live and work day to day. I'm sure it's just as valuable for the leader who's normally up in the penthouse suite or in the corner office to get down on the floor to see where the real action is, see how the people are, are getting the job done, see what's really happening for the employees. And it must be great for the, the workers, too, who get to, to see the boss face-to-face. But here's the thing. They don't really know it. They're just doing their job, and they don't even know that the boss is right there with them. At the end, though, they get the big reveal. All along, the boss was here, and we didn't even know it. Well, isn't that what God does with us, too? God sends CEO Jesus into our time and history to walk with us, to get down and dirty in the trenches on the factory floor and show us and learn from us and lead us into doing the job that we're called to do. We are the workers, and Jesus is the boss showing us the way to go. Jesus promises us, too, that the CEO will recognize those who, who did the work faithfully, those who lived the mission faithfully, those who followed the company policy of peace and justice to get the job done. That's us, we're those frontline workers here for a purpose. And Jesus teaches us to live by serving others. That's what this kingdom is about, that's, what's, that's what this company's about, that's the mission, and that's the way that Jesus models and teaches in his life and ministry through his death and resurrection. And Jesus instructs his friends and all who will listen to follow him in the way of the Beatitudes, to live in that way of self-sacrifice and servant leadership and humility and peace and promises a place in the kingdom for those in need, for those who endure everything that comes along with it, for those ones who served, who provided for people in need, who did it without even knowing they were serving the King of Kings, 
Jesus says, just truly, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. We are called to serve in lots of different ways with whatever gifts God has given us. And Jesus says, you did it to me. From the very beginning, God promises Abraham a great nation. And to Daniel, an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away. And his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. Well, Jesus is the kind of king that doesn't sit on an earthly throne, but gives himself for the life of the world. He doesn't wear a crown of gold and jewels, but a crown of thorns. He gives us his own body and blood that we would feed the world he so loves. Power and might don't win the day in this kind of kingdom, but mercy and justice and peace and self-giving love. Because folks, we know it doesn't, doesn't take much to see our world is hurting in so many ways. We need workers in the kingdom, ones who can go and serve the way Jesus models. And we've been given countless opportunities to provide help, just a healing presence, a listening ear, hope and comfort every day. But the good news is Jesus is right here with us, working alongside us to get the mission done. And Jesus is alive, not on some throne far away, but alive in our world, empowering us through the Holy Spirit to go and do the work, to, to go and serve others. We are freed to do it. And we've heard that call to faithful service, and we're here to respond. And as we do, to live into the promised goodness and glory of Christ, our true King. I invite you to pray with me. God, our King, like a good boss, you show up with us and do the work in us. You lead us in your way of peace and truth and grace. Open our hands and open our eyes to see the ways that we can make a difference in this world, to follow you into your blessed kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.